All right, hello everyone. This is Jason from the Whistle Shop here in Waterford, Michigan. Um, this time around, I'm going to make a video on a few different things. Uh, number one, we're going to cover some of the basics of how we put together the replica 611 whistle. Um, as you can see here on our workbench, we have one of the original 611 whistles or a Class J whistle, which is a three chime Hancock. This is on loan to us from Preston Clater, who is the head chairman for the Fire Up 611 campaign. Um, the other things that we're going to touch on here today, too, are some of the differences in whistle valves that we have the ability to build here at our shop. What I'd like to start off with doing here is take apart the replica whistle for the 611 that we have built here and show you some of the basic functions of how we put it together. And I'm going to step away from the camera here a little bit and remove the top nut that holds the bell onto the whistle bowl. For some of you out there that don't know some of this terminology, the top part of the whistle is known as the whistle bell, the lower portion is known as the whistle bowl, and if you have a bowl with a valve, that's a whistle bowl valve combination. So I'm going to take this nut that holds the bell onto the whistle bowl off, and our bell slides up and off of the lower part of the whistle known as the bowl. Now I know this video is not going to be the greatest quality and we have people that are going to start coming to our shop to do high quality videos. They're going to have better lighting. Um, perhaps we're going to have a small introductory commercial type video made for the whistle shop. That's all coming relatively soon. But I'm going to try to move the camera around here. It's on a tripod today. and I'm going to try to move this around to get up here a little, little closer so you can possibly see what I'm doing. I need both hands today to do this. Uh, inside the whistle is a solid rod with two threaded ends. When we first started building whistles, we would build whistles with an all threaded rod. Well, I didn't like that idea, so I went with a similar design from another whistle manufacturer that does a solid rod with threaded ends on it. Now that's what we do here too and we're finding it, it it's it's a lot better as far as being able to slide the whistle bell on and off the whistle bowl. So here we have a solid rod with two threaded ends inside the whistle. That comes out and unscrews lay that carefully on the bench. Inside the whistle bowl we have a languid plate. Now this languid plate directs the steam flow through a tiny little slot all the way around the edge of the bowl and pushes that steam up into the upper part of the whistle known as the bell. And that's where you get your sound. A lot of people think the sound comes from inside the bottom of the whistle and not quite sure how the top of the whistle functions. Well that's how they function. The bell actually makes the sound, the steam vibrates the air and the bell at the same time to create the sound waves that you hear. So to put this back together we would lay languid plate back inside. Now you can probably see the little slot where the steam would come out and when you put the languid plate back in, threaded rod screws back down inside to the center part of the bowl. The bell then slides up and over nice and easy because it is very heavy. and the chamber separations of the bell rest on top of the languid plate. Now, I have been told from someone who works on a full-size steam engine 
for one of the tourist railroads here in the state of Michigan that on a whistle you can get different, slightly different sounds out of it simply by rotating the bell on the existing whistle bowl. Uh, this happens to be true with the same as the Nathan Six Chime that is currently on the Pierre Marquette engine 1225 of the Steam Railroading Institute in Owasso, Michigan. Uh, it is their chief mechanical officer who I had spoke with several weeks back about the replica we built for that engine that if you turn the bell in slightly different positions you could almost hear the different sounds and the different pitches change while he rotates it so they rotate it to get it to sound good on one angle and if you turn it to another angle it sounds completely different and doesn't sound anything like the original whistle should so those are things to keep in mind anytime I build a replica if you go to use that on either compressed air or you're actually going to have a steam engine to put this on then the rotation of the bell can sometimes play into a factor of how it's going to sound if it's going to sound relatively close to the original like we have here and we did find that um, putting it on compressed air these two whistles sound really identical to each other. It's kind of hard to tell the difference between the two. We really had to go back through our videos when we recorded them. We put them on our 60 gallon air compressor at 150 pounds of air pressure and we stood back about 150 feet or so and did several recordings back to back to back to back and could not find much of a difference at all and I know that if this is going to be a whistle that someone purchases from us and has it put on the 611 engine itself for any kind of um, excursion service and then they stamp it or whatever they're going to do to authenticate this whistle being that it's down inside the pocket of the top of the engine on 611 it's probably going to even sound different than being out in the open so I want everybody to keep that that idea in mind that wherever you're going to blow this whistle at it might not sound 100% to the original but everything as far as the measurements the diameter chamber separation they are identical to the 611 whistle okay now we are going to be able to make three versions of this whistle uh, the replica of 611's whistle we are going to make number one which will be a whistle that you can use strictly on compressed air. The one that's going to be used strictly on compressed air will not have a valve built into the bottom of the bowl like this whistle has. You'll have to use a ball valve to blow your whistle a quick open close open close or however you want to play with your whistle on compressed air. Should you want to take your whistle to a whistle blow uh, where you can blow it on a steam engine whistle manifold or something of that nature then version number two is what you see here in front of you in front of you on the uh, computer screen or mobile device this will allow you to have a valve right inside the bottom of the whistle and be able to use it on steam up to 300 pounds of steam pressure and you could also use this one on compressed air but with there being a brass seat for the valve on the inside of this, the, the heat from the steam will help expand that valve and help it seat better as you're blowing the whistle or, or using it or having fun with it or whatever you're, you're going to use it for. We did notice that the original 611 whistle, even when that's put on compressed air, the valve inside this one has a little bit of blow-by. You can hear the air hissing around the valve so as the temperature from the steam heats up the metals inside here it'll help seat the valve even though we do grind the valves a little bit to help seat them even further after machining them to be true with each other when they come together and seat it's just something that's laws of physics I guess you could say when metal heats up it expands 
it seats better when it's cold it contracts so you kind of get the idea there um we're into now we're going to go into the uh different types of valves that i can make i'm going to back the uh, camera up here now i'm trying to stay back a little bit so everybody at home or on their mobile device can see this okay our one of our prototype valves that we needed to build for the 611 whistle was a two inch valve that could withstand superheated steam at 300 pounds well this whole valve system here is uh, built using schedule 80 seamless pipe the valve inside is a solid machine brass with a tapered seat the handle configuration can be made to custom for whatever application or whistle that you're going to mount on top of this and these can be purchased separately the difference between this valve and the one inside the actual bottom of the whistle is you can screw any whistle you want onto this it's a little bit easier for us to make this portion of the whistle valve than it is to make sure it's all lined up and, and running true and perfectly straight with the actual whistle bowl. So when you purchase a whistle bowl and valve combination from us, you're looking at $700. If you want the replica 611 whistle or a Class J style whistle, which is a Hancock 3 chime, with a valve version number two is what you see here version number two right here is a thirteen hundred dollar whistle okay the secondary uh the, the the whistle valve here um is sold separately you can purchase this separately with one handle that will be for sale at the cost of three hundred eighty dollars now please keep in mind any of these prices i give you we probably can work a little bit under circumstances or special circumstances for pricing and stuff, but um, shipping is not included in any of these prices. Okay, shipping is extra because uh, on a tall whistle like this, for me to package it up nice and neat, I got ex packaging expenses, materials, uh, the time to put into that, and then ship it off. That. That's about $55 to $60 for shipping a larger whistle of this size. Um, other people have asked me about other whistle valves besides this one, which is, this one's a spring-loaded whistle valve. This is pretty much standard what you'll find on the market for whistle valves, whether it be half inch, three quarters, one inch, or inch and a quarter. The two inch whistle valves we have found have been harder to find, so we started out with making the two inch whistle valves. So people with larger locomotive style whistles, if they've had one made by another whistle manufacturer that didn't have a valve, we can offer them a valve with different style handles of, of their choice. Um, the other whistle valves that are not so common, but have been used by railroads, are another one like this, which is a valve bowl combination some of you have seen me build this with the southern pacific six chime whistle that i finished recently and sent to um, south carolina uh i'm sorry yeah no north carolina sorry i had to remember where i'm shipping all these whistles to um that has a similar design like this where the steam pressure as you would hook it up to uh, steam or air would force that valve closed okay now instead of having a spring inside this valve the uh, the steam pressure for this one holds the valve closed the spring in these valves helps hold that close and then it still has a steam pressure behind that yet but the the, the spring allows it to be more smooth action the uh, the valves with a lever like this, you have to pull down against the steam pressure. Now this one's in here reversed because we have it sitting on display. But This is typically how they go in. You would pull the handle out 
and you can see it pushes the plunger down and you're pushing against the force of whatever your steam pressure is inside your boiler or you're pushing against the force of whatever would be on an air compressor. I do not recommend this style for compressed air. I, I would shy away from this and I would use one without a built-in valve for an air compressor simply because of the reason I talked about earlier in this video the blow-by. You'll still hear a little bit of hissing sound and if you don't have a substantially big biome of compressed air you could lose some of that really quickly if you don't use a ball valve to blow your whistle on, on compressed air. The um, other type of whistle valve which is a, a third type is a top lever valve. It works much similar to the valve on the valve bowl combination and this is kind of what this is. It's kind of like a bowl valve combination but the, the, the way this works is it has a rod that goes down the center of this whistle. I hope you all can see this here uh, on camera. I'm, I'm doing the best I can to keep this in sight. There is a rod that goes all the way down the center of this whistle to a plunger on the bottom here. And as you can see, when I pull the lever, the plunger opens, allows steam to rush past that up into the whistle. And again, the steam pressure pushes that closed so there is no spring. You're using the pressure of the steam as your spring to shove that valve closed. It does work, and again, once the valve is seated on a steam engine, and the, the temperature will expand the metals and allow that to seat a lot better, even though I do, once again, I do seat them here at the shop before they're shipped out. Um, to have a, uh, just a regular whistle with no valve on it in the 611 series, uh, Class J whistle, you're looking at $700 for, for one without a valve in it. Uh, that's uh, version 1. Version 2 is $1,300. Now, version 3, and a lot of people are asking me, well, what's version 3? And I'm going to put the camera back over here and kind of walk this thing up onto the uh, original whistle here. Version three, if you if you look, has some tapered fins, or, or not fins, but they have some tapered chamber separations on the whistle that come down to a, a center plate that uh, is all part of the whistle bell. I'm gonna unscrew this. As you see, as I'm unscrewing it, this bottom part that is also part of the chamber separations is turning at the same time the separations are. All this we can do here in our shop, including the little intricate details of these little nubs where you can put a wrench on and tighten this thing down. We can do all that. It's more machine time, more welding time, because I have to make the jigs to hold all that stuff in place. For us to do an identical replica to this one, and it they're all made out of steel. There's no casting bronze. There's no casting the whistle valve bowl combination. It's all done piece by piece by piece. Intricate detail, welding, grinding, polishing, and high temperature painting. For me to do a whistle bell that looks like this one with the bowl valve combination, like the uh, replica here, this this whole setup right here, I'd have to have at least eighteen hundred dollars for to do, because I'm looking at the better part of probably fifty five sixty hours machine time plus materials, uh, welding, grinding, etc. 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 So version one uh, is a seven hundred dollar whistle. Version two is thirteen hundred. Version three is eighteen hundred. Okay. Those are the prices. I'll put those up on our YouTube channel uh, underneath the information section for this video. And I'll also post this to our Facebook page so everybody has a clear understanding of what the prices are 
that I need to have for these whistles, okay? Um, I think I've touched on quite a few different key points in this video. This is probably one of my longer videos, so if anybody has any questions, um, message me on Facebook. Please look us up on Facebook. I know a lot of people haven't done anything with Facebook and they kind of shy away from it. It's a website for us right now that we can use with no charge to us to publish what we do, but we're having we're having some new things come in where we've got two or three other people that are getting involved with the whistle shop. We've got to be able to compensate them for their time. Um, we're going to probably have a really nice production video made here soon. So all, you're not just paying for a whistle when you pay these prices for a whistle. You're going to get something that's going to last uh, for as long as you take care of it. Um, we're paying for possibly getting into a better shop our machining tools we'd like to upgrade so that we can serve people faster at the point where we can get where we can serve people faster then I could honestly say the prices would come down slightly but we're, we're in a growing stage and growing costs just like it costs money to rebuild the 611 and I do appreciate everything that the 611 committee is doing for us here at the whistle shop and with that, I'm going to leave everybody and let everybody take a look at the picture I've posted on Facebook of the two whistles here. And, and again, any questions, comments, please feel free to write us an email or contact us here at the shop. Uh, again, this is Jason from the Whistle Shop saying thanks again for watching and hope you all enjoyed this video.